they tend to hire young, smart people who work hard hours, are intensely excited about the work that they're doing and really engaged with the work. That's why they're, that's why they're there. Um, they don't hide that fact that it's a, a really intense work environment. Um, and people burn out. Uh, and that's sort of the, the system that they've, that, that they've created. Um, but you know, we know you, you end up then really, at the end of the day, with one type of person in the organization, someone that sort of has a life that they want to do nothing but work, work all the time, and not have, have a life. And I think from what we know about sort of having, having sort of diversity of all kinds, um, you know, whether we're talking racial diversity, gender diversity, sort of, sort of lifestyle, information diversity, you sort of lose a lot when you, you sort of really select on that one thing. If in fact um, Amazon is so bad and it has so suffered the cost of losing diversity, of the churn and burn, and some of the employees are talking about the fact that their best minds are shutting off, then Amazon will pay the price. And for me, I personally am very reliant on, I trust markets. And I trust markets to create enough heterogeneity of workplace cultures that each one of us can figure out where it is that we fit best and based on what the company's values are and our values to the extent that they're synergistic, we work there. To the extent that they're not, we walk out the door. So to my friend that, that was there for six years, she was, a, she was a good cultural fit and then her life changed mm -hmm. and she couldn't work, oh, you know, didn't want to work mm -hmm. uh, all of those hours and lots and lots of people were like that. So I don't think it's simply just find a fit. It's not, I mean, our, you know, our lives also have to fit into our, and our work, and I, you know, it shouldn't have to be such a strong trade-off. So I don't think that I'm advocating for the fact that there should be no life whatsoever and it should all be work, work, work. Good companies realize that these good work practices do engage people and create loyalty. Again, I'm going to come back, not just to money, but also to autonomy, mastery, and purpose. And to the extent that employee retention is not just the basis of how hard I work and how much money I earn, but how satisfied I am with the job, good companies think about each of these things as they create a work culture. Your reputation as a firm in terms of your employment relationships would yield some kind of result in five year to ten years horizon. So if you take a longer run, the question is not that easy to define whether a benign HR policy, um, you know, at immediate cost for the firm, like offering long maternity leave, you know, would generate a longer horizon of profits down the road for, uh, for Amazon. So that's my view, that a good manager who is thinking about the firm in the long run, um, you know, should take that kind of longer horizon view.